Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mary and today's video is going to be my August wrap up. So I'm going to start with my stats again. In the month of August, I read 10 books, but I'm doing 11 books in this wrap up just because I finished one book. I read it for most of August and finished it on September 1st, technically, but I had like barely any left. So I'm counting it as an August book. So if that bothers you, I'm sorry. Um, but I didn't count the last bit that I read in my total page count, if that makes sense. So for demographics, I read zero middle grade, one young adult, zero new adult, and 10 adult books. For the genres that I read this month, I did read two science fiction, two nonfiction, one fantasy, one literary fiction, two contemporary, two horror, and one mystery thriller. As far as star ratings go, I did read zero one stars, two two stars, three three stars, two four stars, and four five stars. So that's an overall star rating of 3.7, um, which actually seemed kind of low to me once I thought about it, but I did have a couple of two stars, which probably threw it off. I thought it would be higher because I had so many five star books that I loved. But for my total page count, I did read 4,972 pages, which I'm pretty stoked about. I think that's less than the last two months, but I started classes this month as well, and I was in Dallas and studying for a test for part of it, so. Oh yes, and I am wearing a sweater and drinking hot tea because it's 70 degrees out, and it's September, so I've decided that it's fall. <laughs> that's really all I have to say about that. Oh, and then for the ways that I read my books this month, I read two books via ebook, three books via audiobook, four books with a physical book, zero books that um, I listened to the audio and did an ebook of as well, but I did have two books that I had a physical book of that I also listened to the audiobook for. Without further ado, I'm gonna get into these books and what I thought about them. I do have my notes on my laptop over here, so if you see me looking down, that's what I'm looking at. And I am just gonna do these in the order that I read them. Let's get started. I'm also gonna scooch so I can put the books up here and you can see the ones that I had an ebook or an audiobook for. So the first book that I read this month was Followers by Megan Angelo. This is a young, or no, sorry, it's an adult sci-fi dystopian and it follows two timelines. One of them is like a journalist for one of those um, like clickbaity websites, but then she has a roommate, she lives in New York City and her roommate is trying to become like a reality celebrity and they like rise to fame. And then the second storyline is the roommate's daughter and she lives in this community in California where like, it's basically like a combination of like reality stars and like YouTubers. Because they're kind of like influencers, but they're never supposed to acknowledge that they're on camera, even though they're always on camera, unless they go to the, I think the bathroom is like the only place it's not on camera. And they have like an hour every night where they're not on camera. And it's just, the daughter's name is Marlo. And she's trying to figure out like what her purpose is for this show. And she's got like millions of followers who just watch what she does all day long. I'm not going to lie to you. This book, I didn't realize that Marlo was in her mid thirties because she read so much like a teenager. Like I thought, I thought this book was young adult because that's how it came off to me. Also, I didn't mention, but I read this because it was the July book for the E equals MC squared book club, um, which I'll have links to all of their channels down below. I um, am I'm de deciding that I'm a member of that book club now. So I read that book really quick so I could do the live show for it. But yeah, I thought it was... It was an interesting book. It wasn't like the worst book I ever read. I didn't say I gave it two stars. I didn't like it. I thought the premise was really interesting, but I just felt like it felt really flat and I didn't care for the ending. I didn't really care about any of the characters. I wanted more from like, I don't know. I feel like I wanted more character motivation for, um, God, I gotta look up her name. Bear with me. Orla. That's the other girl's name, the girl in like the present day, basically. I wanted more character development for her. And there's this like big event that everything is building up to and it's called The Spill. And by the time you get to what The Spill actually is, I just felt like there could have been more there. Like it could have explained it better. I just, I really felt like everything in this book just like didn't really meet expectations. I didn't really vibe with the writing style. I didn't feel like the characters were developed enough. I didn't feel like the story got into all the things it could have. And there's also some really bizarre parts that I didn't really understand. So overall two stars, I wasn't a huge fan of it. Next, 
The next book that I read this month was Educated by Tara Westover. Um, this was for the prompt, read a book that my sister picks on my TBR game. Um, I'll have the playlist for my TBR game up here and down below, so you can watch it if you're interested in how I pick the books that I'm going to read every month. Um, but this is a memoir of a woman who grew up in Idaho, and her family was, well, they, they are, um, religious extremist is the wrong word. They're Mormon, but they're very, like, strict to certain parts of Mormonism, but also they've added in some things that they think is a part of that. And she makes very clear, like, my parents didn't raise me this way because they were Mormon, because this isn't how regular Mormon people raise their children. My parents raised me this way because they are... A little bit unhinged. I don't really know the like nice way to say that but basically her dad has decided they're like doomsday preppers. So they've got all this food stocked up in like canned goods. They don't go to school. They don't go to the hospital because they don't trust the government. Um, it's just a very interesting like life that she has. So she's never been to school as a kid and she talks about like growing up and seeing her siblings do this and her brother Tyler gets to go off to school and he goes to college um because he takes some test and like I don't know it was really really interesting and it was just about how she is in this situation that's like kind of dangerous for her physically because her family doesn't go to the doctor so at one point they get in a car wreck and her mom suffers severe brain damage but nobody ever takes her to the doctor for it she just it's only now looking back that Tara, who understands, sorry, Tara, I think is how she pronounces her name. I have a cousin who spells her name the same way, but pronounces it Tara, but I'm pretty sure everyone else says Tara. Just ignore me if I say things wrong. I don't really know. But, um, but yeah, I did end up giving this five stars. I know some people feel weird about like reading memoirs, and I don't, I guess. I don't use the same rating system. I use Copile, which is G from Book Roast's rating system for my fiction. But I'm thinking I'm going to change that at some point. Probably I'll be working on developing a new rating system for the end of this year. And then I'll launch it next year just so I can have some consistency. But for like nonfiction, it doesn't really fit because there's like in this one, there's characters, but they're real people. So it feels weird to be like two out of 10. So I feel like you can still do writing style, which I really enjoyed. Um, but yeah, it's just about how she gets out of this abusive childhood situation that she's been in in Idaho, ends up going off to Brigham Young University in Utah, and then a graduate program over in England, and how she has to, like, navigate fam familial relationships, and just, like, the divide that comes in her family from her and her siblings that are able to get out of that situation versus the siblings that are still there, um, and I think she changed everybody's name, too. So that was really interesting. I would highly recommend this if you're interested in memoirs. Um, or, like, her family wasn't in a cult. But, like, if you like cult-style books or... <laughs> like sounds bad. Um, it's like when people say, I really like serial killers, because you don't. If you find that kind of thing interesting, then I think you would really enjoy this one. Then... <gasps> knocking stuff over. I did participate in Tome Topple, so I read um, The Dark Forest by Si Chen Liu, which is the second book in the Remembrance of Earth's Past series. This is a hard science science fiction trilogy, and it basically follows people on Earth who discover an alien planet, and the alien planet discovers Earth, and it's about the like conflict that results from that. I'm not really going to give you any details on this because this is the second book in the series. I will say... I really loved this book. I gave it five stars. I gave the first one five stars. The series is so, so good if you're interested in science fiction and, like, the speculative idea of, like, what would actually happen if another planet discovered Earth, I guess. That's something that's really interesting that's brought up in this is that, like, scientists on Earth for, like, in real life have been sending signals out into the stars to, like, discover new planets. But if you like this book kind of I don't think this is a spoiler it kind of explains that like if a more advanced civilization on another planet discovered earth it would have to destroy it because you don't know if it's a threat and so you just you neutralize the threat that may or may not be there so that was really interesting and also kind of horrifying but um yeah I really really loved this book this was originally written in Chinese and it was translated into English it also, I mention this every time I talk about these books. Maybe this one doesn't have any. This one has a different translator, so it might not have any, like, 
I can't find any, but this has footnotes in it um, that explain, like, because Western cultures typically teach, like, Western history, so I don't know a lot of, like, Chinese history or Asian history um, or even, like, Eastern cultural things, so any, like, cultural reference or a reference to, like, a famous Chinese philosopher or stuff like that, there would be a footnote that explains who that person is um, and, like, why the foot, why the reference or whatever is relevant, which I really appreciated as someone who doesn't really have a, a firm grasp on Chinese history. So, yes, this is really, really good. I recommend this series. Um, oh, and I did read this for Tome Topple. I can't remember now what tomes this fulfilled, but I do have that video, so it's up there and down there. Um, Tome Topple wiped me out this month. <laughs> I think that's the reason I didn't read as much as I usually do because I read so many big books and then I was like, all right, I'm, I'm done reading for a while. The next book that I read also for Tome Topple is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This, I remember, filled the tome or fulfilled the prompt for Tome Topple of the tome that's been on my TBR the longest because this was like the first book on my Goodreads TBR when I opened it. Or I think it was like the third. So... I was really interested in reading this. I can't remember what my TBR game prompt this fulfilled. I should really keep better track of that. But this is the first book in an adult fantasy series, basically following this guy Kvothe, who is like, he starts out in this book as like a 15 year old magician or wizard or what is the right word? Magic person, warlock maybe? But he goes to a magic school. It follows him in like childhood. And I gave this book three stars. It was almost a four star, but I just didn't like Kvothe very much, both. And I just felt like I didn't like the love interest very much. I, it has a magical school in it. So if you really like magical schools, you might like this. But I, for some reason, I didn't really love, I mean, I didn't have a problem with the magical school so much as I had a problem with like both being good at everything. And parts of it didn't make sense. Like he was supposed to be a 15 year old boy, but people would be like terrified of him and like afraid, which didn't really make sense. And he also like, had a way with the ladies, which I didn't really understand because he's supposed to be at the school way before he's supposed to be admitted. So all of his classmates are like late teens, early 20s. And I just can't imagine being like college age and interested in like a freshman in high school, if that makes sense. So for me, I had a really hard time with that. But I did think this world was really cool. I enjoyed the world building a lot. And I... Part of the reason I didn't give it four stars, and I don't think I'm going to be continuing this series, is because the third book hasn't come out yet. And so just the fact, I think that clouded my judgment as well when I was reading this, just because I did enjoy this while I read it. But just knowing that I'll never get a, a, a closure to this story kind of hurts my feelings. And I don't, I like wish I hadn't read it almost. The fifth book that I read is an, another two star from me. This is The Goldfinch by Donna Tart, which won the Pulitzer Prize. Um, now, this book is 771 pages, which is extremely long, and I, I just felt like it wasn't very good. So, this is described as, like, Dickinsonian, which I can, I get, there's, like, a name reference, like, in the in Great Expectations, there's a character named Pip, in this, there's a character named Pippa, um, it has our main character, Theo Decker, becomes an orphan, and it's just, I should explain what this is about. This is about Theo Decker, and it starts when he's 12 or 13, I think, living in New York City with his mom. His father is nowhere to be found, and his mom dies in a terrorist attack at an art museum, and he ends up stealing the painting of the goldfinch, and it becomes his, like, deep, dark secret that kind of, like, eats him up inside, um, I think is, like, what you're supposed to get from it. But he just has like a really shitty childhood. He later moves to Las Vegas and like it talks about his like run-ins with um, this boy Boris who's like a Russian, not exchange student. There's just apparently in Las Vegas a lot of like international kids, like kids from all over the world. And Boris is from, I think actually Ukraine, but, or Poland. <sighs> I don't know. The I listened to this as an audiobook as well as reading it physically because I just thought it was so dull. There were parts of this that I loved and the, I thought the writing was beautiful. I can tell that Donna Tartt is a really, really talented wordsmith, but I just didn't like, I read this whole thing and, and at the end I was like, why did I like, I feel like this could have been edited or pared down to like 400 pages and it would have been a really, really good, really, really powerful book. But for me, as it stands, 
It was way too long. It didn't hold my interest. And like, I can like a, an unlikable character. That's not the problem for me. The problem is, it's not even that the characters weren't well developed. It's just that like, everything was miserable about it. And I just didn't, I couldn't find any joy in the misery or even I couldn't really um, relate to the misery because it was just very like, I feel like he brought it on himself the whole time. I don't know. If you've read this, let me know. I know Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophe really liked this book. So Olivia, if you're watching, why? <laughs> Please explain. Um, okay, great. The next book I read was Clopany Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is a book written in verse from two perspectives of two sisters, one living in New York and one living in the Dominican Republic. And they have the same father but different mothers and their dad dies in a plane crash. And that's how they sort of find out that the other one exists. They didn't know before that they had a sister. And it's about grief and loss and how different people handle that. It's also about the difference between like your quality of life living in New York with two parents and having a little bit of money versus living in the Dominican Republic where her mom is dead already. Her dad dies, so she becomes an orphan and her aunt has been taking care of her. And just like the difference in her life and the different struggles that she has to go through because she lives in the Dominican Republic. And it's it also was really interesting because it talked about like the girl living in New York is really interested in like beauty and nails and stuff. And thinks she might want to go into something with that. And the girl in the Dominican Republic is like, well, I got to be a doctor. Because otherwise, I'm never getting off this island. And I just thought that was really interesting. Like, the way that they look at their futures. And, like, what having a future means, depending on where you're from. But, like I said, this book is written entirely in verse. This is my second Elizabeth Acevedo book of the year. And I will read anything that she puts out. Next, I've got to read With the Fire on High. Because that's a full novel, I'm pretty sure. Like, not written in verse. Just regular novelness um <laughs> but I'm extremely excited that I got to read this one I also read this for the e equals mc squared book club this was their august book I really enjoyed it I listened to this as an audiobook which I liked oh I didn't say I gave this five stars I just thought it was beautiful it made me cry it also kind of reminded me of what is that new there's a 1975 song called like Jesus Christ 2005 something it's got Phoebe Bridgers on it and there's a part, like part of the chorus is searching for planes in the sea. Now that's irony. And there's a part where Phoebe Bridgers is singing about being in love with the girl next door. And in this book, um, Yahaira, the sister living in New York, has a, is in a relationship with her next door neighbor, who is a girl. So yeah, I really loved what this book brought to the table. I loved listening to it as an audiobook because Elizabeth Acevedo narrated. And I think she had another voice because it sounded like there were two voice actors to play the different sisters. Um, and I felt like I've heard criticisms that the voices don't sound distinct enough to people. I thought they were very distinct and possibly that was from me listening to it, but oh, I highly recommend this one. It's so good. Next I read Everyone Knows You Go Home by Natalia Sylvester. This is so good too. I gave this four stars, but this is about a woman named Isabel who is married to this man named Martin and Martin's father abandoned his family when Martin was a little boy and Isabel meets him on she and Martin's wedding day because he appears to them as an apparition because they get married on the day of the dead. So it's the one day in Mexican cultures it's believed that I think it's November 1st or November 2nd but it's the one day where the dead can come back to earth and families make like a shrine to their loved ones and there's like parades and stuff in Mexico and also South Texas. So anyways, that's like the premise of this book. And he comes back every year on their anniversary because he's trying to get his wife and children to forgive him. It was really interesting. But also in this book, I think it's like a cousin or a nephew of Isabel's husband, Martin, crosses the border from Mexico because he's running from the gangs um, in his hometown. And Isabel and Martin take him in. And it's about Isabel's like struggle with that because she's, I mean, I think she's Mexican American, but she's like, she has one line where she says like, my family's been in Texas since it was its own country or something like that. There's a lot of like family drama because Isabel obviously is trying to get Martin to talk to her about his dad and he never wants to talk about it. And so she feels a strain on her marriage. Um, also like... Elda, Martin's mother, is getting old and getting dementia, and so they're trying to, like, all take care of her, and then this teenage boy crosses the border that's Martin's family, and Isabel's trying to figure out, like, where she stands 
in her own life and then is she ready to have a teenager living with her and it's just it's really really good it's really really heartbreaking this book made me cry as well but I I would highly recommend this if you like like a contemporary with a little bit of magical realism um and if you're interested about like the plight of being migrant it deals a lot with the concept of a human being legal versus illegal and a lot with the struggles that immigrants go through to become U.S. citizens, I would highly recommend this. Especially if you live in like the Southwest. We're moving on to Summerween. So I participated in Summerween as well. I didn't end up reading as many books as I thought I would. I read three. I was planning on reading five. One of them I started and carried over into September. So that'll be a surprise for my next wrap up. First, I read The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. This book was so fun. I gave it four stars. This is a horror book set in the 80s, and it's about, like, a housewife who is kind of bored, and so she joins this book club with other women in her neighborhood, and they live in South Carolina or Georgia, I think. I think it's South Carolina, because they talk about Clemson, so I assume that's in South Carolina. Um, but anyways... <laughs> She has this book club and they read like true crime books and like books about serial killers because it's around that time when all of this stuff was like the media was covering more um, like domestic violence and serial killers and crimes like that. So they, they're reading all these books about that kind of thing. And then a man moves across the street to take care of his mother and they realize that something they, the main character, Patricia realizes that there's something not quite right with him. And so she is trying to convince her book club that this guy has something wrong with him. And she decides that he's like a vampire or something. And then conversely, Patricia's mother-in-law, her husband's mom, is really old. And she's been living with Patricia in a room that they converted their garage into. And they have a like nurse slash housemaid caretaker person. I don't think she's actually a nurse. I think she's just like their hired caretaker who is a black woman and she lives on the other side of the tracks. And in her neighborhood, children are going missing. Children are going missing. Children are killing themselves, like little kids, like eight-year-olds. And so Patricia's like, well, something's not right here. And then she she she, she, she she suspects that her neighbor across the street has something to do with it. And so it's sort of about no one believing her and her trying to convince people like, no, this dude is bad news. Because everyone's like, oh, well, he's a white man who came from this good family that we know. He's our neighbor. So whatever. And it also plays on the fact that like suburban like moms at this time are notoriously nosy. So they're always like writing down license plates of strange cars in their neighborhood and doing all this stuff and like peeking over to be like, well, someone's dog peed on your lawn. Like all this kind of stuff, but they're not willing to do anything about the evidence that's put forth in front of them because they just want to believe that their neighborhood is this nice, peaceful, quaint place. And that whatever's happen happening on the other side of the tracks with the black community is the black community's problem, which I think is really relevant even today. Just the idea that like, we are this like high society, white suburban neighborhood. They are this poor black trailer community. Like if they were gonna die off and leave, let them. Which is really interesting. It was, I didn't expect this book to be about race. Um, and it was. And it played with racial themes in a really interesting, like, different way. And how, like, white guilt isn't enough. And so I thought that was really interesting. And I wasn't expecting that from it. But I would highly recommend this. It was fun. I enjoyed it. I want to read Grady Hendrix. He has another one called, like, My Best Friend's Exorcism. And I think it's, like, set around the same time. I just think it's a really fun time period to play with. And I really, really enjoyed that one. I did give it four stars. And then I read The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware, which I gave five stars. I loved The Turn of the Key. So this is a play on that like late 19th century story, The Turn of the Shrew. I always want to say shrew, but that's the taming of the shrew, which is not at all the same thing. But The Turn of the Key follows Rowan, who is a nanny. And she goes to interview at this house, this remote house in Scotland. And it's a smart house and there's like three girl, two little girls that live there and there's a teenage daughter that's supposed to be coming home from school for the summer. She goes to a boarding school and so she'll be home partway through and Rowan gets the job and she's living with these girls in this house and the girls have been told something about there being like, it's like an old Victorian home that's been partially remodeled and it's entirely like a smart house. So you say like lights are on and the lights turn on and like every room has an iPad so you can like push buttons for different settings 
and the technology is messing up and there's a poison garden on the yards. On the yards. What is the word I'm looking for? On the grounds. <laughs> yards. Um, Scotland Yard, maybe? I don't really know what I was going for there. But there's all this weird stuff happening and Rowan, the nanny, is trying to figure out if it's ghosts or what it is. And she keeps hearing noises in the attic and it's really like creeping her out. I thought this was so good. And this is written from the perspective of Rowan writing a letter to her solicitor when she's sitting in a Scotland jail for murdering one of the children. And so that's what you know going into it. And then you get her to tell you this whole story. And I just found it so like creepy. And also I feel like I like felt for Rowan so much. Like I'm very like, I'm a very passable babysitter, but kids aren't like, oh no, please don't leave when I'm going home. Cause they're like, okay, great. See you next time. So I just feel like that's the vibe I got from Rowan almost. And I related to it, but it's really good. I would, I would recommend it. I would, I would give it a shot if you're into like mystery thrillers. Yeah. Or if you want like a creepy story. I thought it was really good. Then I read, um, Gwendy's Button Box by Stephen King. I ended up giving Stephen King and Richard Chismar. I was afraid to say the second author's name. This is a part of a series. I want to say it's just a duology, so I might pick up the second one, but it is longer. Um, I think it's like a full-size novel. This is just a little novella. I gave this three stars. I thought it was fine. There was nothing phenomenal, ab phenomenal about it. It didn't like really grasp my attention all that well. The characters were fine. The atmosphere was fine. The writing style was pretty good. Like I was able to keep up. It was fast paced. I liked the illustrations. I thought it was a really neat concept. Also, I realized how stupid I am because it's called the button box because there's like buttons that you can push on the box. And when I read button box, I read a box that you store buttons so you can sew them on your shirt. So everyone laugh at me. <laughs> okay, thank you. But um, yeah, I just didn't think it was that enthralling for me. It's a unique story. Like it's different. It's not something that I'd heard of before, but I wanted to be gripped and I wasn't. So that was a no from me. I mean, it's fine. It's fine. That's my official review is... It, it was fine. Then the book that I'm going to cheat and say that I read, even though I didn't really finish it until yesterday, is Reader Come Home by Marianne Wolf, The Reading Brain in the Digital World. So this is a nonfiction book about basically the effects of digital media being introduced too early into children um, and the effects of, so it talks about the effects on adults who have been reading with print media. And then suddenly we have this whole world of all this information right at our fingertips and how we react to that, or rather how our brain reacts to that. Um, and how like, there have been all these studies where if you read ebooks, you glean less from it than if you read a physical book. And my thing about that is, I think maybe that's true if you're not used to reading ebooks, or she does something similar for audiobooks. But I think you can train yourself to do any of those things. Like I don't think I read less efficiently when I read an ebook than a physical book because I feel like I'm still, because I'm just adapting to a different format. So there's that. I ended up giving this three stars as well. Okay, sorry about that. I don't remember where I was, but this also talked a lot about like the importance of reading physical books to children and how a lot of parents don't do that anymore because they decided that they don't have the time and like the TV is a great nanny. She like uses that in other like condescending language, which I personally, it rubbed me the wrong way just because there are a lot of reasons that parents can't or there are a lot of reasons that parents don't read to their children um, from being in a single family household and you having to work all day or being in a, a household where both parents work. It's having your kid at daycare, the daycare instructor isn't going to sit there and read to your child because frankly, th there's two people in a room of 30 kids. Like they can't. And then just the concept of like accessibility of print media. And also I think it kind of, okay, digital media is going to be a part of these kids' lives forever. So at the very end of this, it got to the point where they were like, they, the author was expressing that 
digital media is going to be a, a part of people's lives and we need to responsibly introduce it to children. And that was where I felt like less annoyed. But I, there were several, like this is written in a style of nine letters. So it's like, dear reader, blah, 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 blah. Like sincerely, your author or whatever. There was another thing that I thought was really interesting about this is um, one of the earlier letters talks about how kids now skim rather than fully deep reading. And while I agree that like fully deep reading can be beneficial for certain topics, I was taught how to effectively skim like as part of my curriculum in school. So it was interesting to me that she was using that as like a negative, which I, I understand that in some circumstances it could be, but I just feel like knowing how to effectively skim a work is like a really good tool. It helps with efficiency. It helps with like being able to figure out, especially when you're taking a test, you need to be able to skim for the answer to the question that you're looking for. So I thought, I don't know. It just seemed like a very old fashioned point of view. And I did appreciate all of the studies that she cited and the research that she's done and that other scientists have talked about. And she did mention that there's a lack of research into children growing up in this digital age and how it would affect their brains going forward because obviously they're still growing up. So I just thought that was really interesting. But that's the last book that I read this month. Those are all 11 books that I read this month. I hope this is even slightly coherent. I feel like I always end up rambling about stuff in these videos, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you've read any of these books, please let me know down below how you felt about them. If you enjoyed this video while you were watching it, you can go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content from me, please feel free to subscribe down below. If you want to be notified of every time I post, you can go ahead and click the bell icon. I hope you guys are having a great weekend and I will see you on Thursday. Bye. Can I say um again?